What's up, everybody? How you doing today? It is I, Coach Stroud, on a very stormy Georgia day. Woo-hoo-hoo, so stormy. Um, I'm standing outside during a break, and I'm guessing that it's probably going to start raining and storming again here. But I wanted to give you a little bit of a video uh, to tell you about some of the stuff I've done to my bike. Um, stuff that I've worked on that uh, my dad, Pops, has worked on with me and yeah just share some information so uh and i hope you enjoy i just want to ask uh, for you to like subscribe all that stuff um i appreciate it you know it's really awesome the 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 people that have been leaving comments thank you so much it means a lot to me and yeah so what you're looking at right now is a 2020 can-am riker 900 ace now I did a lot of research on the Riker before I purchased, a ton to be exact. I, I looked into it, I, I, I studied specs, I went and took a Can-Am Riker course uh, to learn how to ride it properly before going out and purchasing one. And I talked to a lot of Riker owners about why they purchased the kind of Riker that they did. Now, there's three models of the Riker, there's the 600, there's the 900 Ace, and then there's the Riker Rally. And one of the big things that I heard from people that were rally owners was, you know, one of the big draws to being a, having the rally is the ability to go off road with it. Well, I gotta be honest with you. I'm not interested in going off road on this bike. Um, it's just not something I care to do. Uh, my dad, uh, Pops, he loves going off road and he has his adventure bike for that and that's great you know it's it's not the kind of riding i want i i enjoy i enjoy just cruising now some people have asked me why did i choose a riker over a traditional two-wheeled motorcycle um I, and i'll give you the truth to it um i rode two-wheel motorcycles for a while uh years ago i i had a i started off with a kawasaki vulcan and it was nice, it was a good starter bike, get me going. And then I switched to a Honda VTX 1300. Uh, it, that was a beautiful bike, I loved it. I still miss that bike, it's, it's awesome. But um, something's happened with me and something that's kind of strange. And basically what has happened is I, I, well, I guess the best way to put it, something's off with my equal, equilibrium. Uh, my balance is not so good anymore. Um, I, <laughs> I stumble a lot. Uh, I, I, I get those, you know, feelings that you're going to fall sometimes. <laughs> and uh, holding up a motorcycle that's several hundred pounds um, just wasn't working for me anymore. And... I was, not not that I couldn't do it, I could still get on a motorcycle and ride it perfectly fine, two-wheel motorcycle, and ride it perfectly fine, but basically, um, yeah, my balance just, it just went out the door. Now, I don't, I don't really know what happened or why it did. Uh, it could have been something, uh, I am prior service military, and I was in the Iraq war, and it could have been something dealing with, with that and some of the stuff that I was in there, that, that I dealt with there. Uh, which is, that's my guess, uh, is, is that, that right there is the reason why. So, I, I took a couple years off from riding, and I missed it. I missed it terribly, and uh, I needed to find a new option. Now, after taking a few years off, I, 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 I wanted to be back on motorcycles again. I loved them. I loved being on the road. I loved riding with my dad. I, I love just the freedom. It, it, it is total, total awesome freedom. And I, I, I don't know. I just, I needed that back. And uh, I talked with my wife. I kind of expressed some of the, the feelings that I was having, the concerns. And she told me to go for it. You know, find something. Find something that was going to work for me. And she was incredibly supportive. And I love that about her, and I appreciate that very much because she uh, she's a, she was a little bit wary at first, and, and rightfully so. Um, and in my research, in all my looking around, I came across that bad boy right there. Whoa! Now, yeah, I knew about spiders, 
I knew about uh, spiders, uh, K&M spiders, F3, stuff like that. Those, those were really neat. But I, I sat on a few of them and I just didn't like the way it felt. I felt like I was sitting on top of the motorcycle. And what I really liked about the cruising bike that I had with the VTX 1300 was I sat into the bike and I rode the bike. We were one, the bike and I were one. And that's what I was looking for. Then one day while I was on YouTube, searching around for the next thing that I could possibly ride, I came across the Can-Am Riker and I fell in love with it instantly. The first thing that really stuck out to me was this right here, this section. You sit into the motorcycle. You and the motorcycle are one together. And I just, wow, I loved it. It was amazing. It, it, it just, it blew me away. I sat on them a few times at different uh, motor, uh, motorsport stores. And just, I knew, I knew this was probably gonna be it. Now, my dad is a former uh, MSF safety instructor. He, he's taught hundreds, if not thousands of people how to ride motorcycles. Uh, it's something that he's incredibly passionate about and he only recently stopped doing it. And I think he, he was an MSF instructor for, I believe 15 to 17 years. Uh, he only recently stopped. And you know, we, he's always instilled in me a sense of safety. You can have fun, you can be energetic, you can ride and have a good time, but you gotta be safe. Safety is always a major thing. Uh, and, and I really took that to heart. So with safety being a, a major factor for me, you're probably thinking, well, okay, so what is it about this Riker? Well, it's three wheels, it's more stable. And with my balance issues, I needed that. I needed the stability. Um, it's just a fact of life. I knew I didn't like trikes. I didn't like uh, trike motorcycles, motorcycles that have been modified into trikes. I wanted something that was going to have an edgier ride, something that was going to be more enjoyable. And so I convinced my dad, you know, MSF safety instructor man, that he and I needed to take a Can-Am riding course together. And we did. And I, I was instantly sold, instantly sold, knew that I had to have this bike, that it was a part of me, that I just, it was just wonderful, wonderful experience. I love the course. My instructor was amazing. Um, her name's Tanya. She's out at Conyers, Georgia. You should go give her a look up if you get a chance, or if you happen to take the Can-Am Rider course and you have her as an instructor, tell her Coach Strauss said, what's up? What's up, Tanya? Um, either way. It was a wonderful experience, um, and I just I got to let it all go and, and just enjoy the bike, and that led me to buying one. Now, back to why I didn't get the rally. I didn't want to go off-road. I wanted to enjoy my ride, but me being a bigger dude, I wanted to make sure I had enough uh, engine to get me, get me rolling places. So I went, instead of doing the 600, I went for the 900. And of course, the 900 doesn't come with a whole lot of stuff on it, you know, like the Rally does. The Rally comes already with the hand guards and the max mount and a better spring on the bottom for, for two up riding. Now, I got to be honest, I'm not interested in any two up riding. Yes, I have kids. Yes, my kids have expressed uh, interest in wanting to ride on the bike with me, uh, but I don't, I'm not ready for that. And I'm probably not going to be ready for that for a while, if ever. And so I'm not looking into the two up riding. So with the 900 coming basically bare bones, there were some changes that needed to be made to make it better. First thing that I did, and it's a small thing, but it, it, it makes a huge difference. Foam grips, oh my goodness, I love these babies. Got mine off of Sling Mods and it makes a huge, huge difference. I noticed uh, without them, the, the vibration is really intense. These definitely cut down on the vibration and makes uh, riding so much more enjoyable. Uh, I would say, honestly, the foam grips are one of the best investments for your bike and they're incredibly cheap, which is even better. Uh, next thing that my pops and I did, we switched out the lights. Um, night riding with the original lights that came, not very fun. We put the LED lights in and oh my gosh, world of a difference. Um, you probably saw maybe in some of my older videos that I had different 
uh, mirrors up here and I did. I bought those standard motorcycle mirrors and they were fine. They looked nice on the bike. It, it was good. I kept the cafe racer mirrors on them as well. I dropped them down to this level and then had the other. So I had four mirrors on my bike, which looked a little funny, but I, I didn't care. Visibility, you know, I want to be able to see everything. Well, the only problem was, is they were always coming loose. I don't know if I got a defected one or if I just did something wrong with the parts, but my mirrors were always coming loose, no matter what I did or my pops did to try to fix it. Just always kept, especially the one on this side, particularly always just coming loose. And I finally got frustrated with it and we took them off. And I honestly, I don't really miss them all that much. Um, one of the other things that we did immediately, shortly after picking up the bike is we added the, the sensors here, the uh, flashers, which is really awesome. So when you stop, they flash. And then we added the, the extra external lights here, there, and on the side, the, the one right here. And I, of course, picked up the shad bag. Now, I want to show you how those lights work. I don't know how it's going to work very well in the daytime, but let's give it a go. All right, so the bike's running. You see those lights? Uh, I'm looking at them, and they're not blinking, but on here, on the camera, they show them blinking. So I want to step on the brake here and kind of give you a little understanding of what it looks like. See how they flicker there? They do like three flashes before, and that's awesome. Now, these are on, the middle one here is on. I don't want to go to, the uh, the middle one's on, the one on the side's on. You probably saw my license plate. Oh well, uh, not a big deal, I guess. And yeah, so, let me turn this off here. So the, um, those flashers are super, super awesome. They really, really show up well at night. And the lights that, the license plate lights that show the light out, um, the red light out, it, at, it, during the daytime, you don't notice them as much, but I'm telling you at nighttime, they are fantastic and they really illuminate the back of your bike. More visibility is always a good, good, good thing, especially at nighttime. Uh, now, of course, if you've seen any of my latest videos, you've seen the, me add the faux uh, Airhawk bag or seat, the Lynx bag with the Max mount, okay? And then, of course, I have my beautiful Shad bag here, and I love this bag. What you don't see, what's upstairs in my closet, actually, is the insert bag that goes with it. Um, when I've traveled with the, uh, with the Riker, I've used the bag for clothes, and it fits perfectly in there, and it kind of gives you a good understanding because the bag is... The insert bag is perfectly shaped like this. So you, when you're packing it, you get the, you know, the, the idea of what, how everything's gonna fit, what your limits are. And it goes in just so beautifully and it's nice. Um, <clears throat> show some of the stickers I have on here. Tail of the Dragon, my uh, pops and I did the dragon together. It was awesome. The ride I enjoyed the most though, uh, up in Tennessee is the Chair Hall of Skyway. Oh my gosh, that is gorgeous, gorgeous ride. Wonderful cruising ride. It's beautiful. A couple more. Just, I love skulls, so, you know, bam. And, of course, another I survived the Tale of the Dragon thing. Uh, another Riker rider, uh, his name is Sam, and he makes YouTube videos. I'm trying to remember his YouTube uh, channel name. I, I don't remember, to be honest. But he, he Sam, his wife gave me this sticker, and I absolutely love it. It's fantastic. Uh, if you get a chance to... to you know, um, get one from her. That'd be awesome. And then of course I have an iron horse lodge sticker down here. Cause that's uh, one of my dad's favorite places to stay. And now one of my favorite places to stay because it's awesome. It's just a beautiful motorcycle lodge built wonderfully. It's gorgeous. We, uh, we actually stayed in the, um, what, Oh gosh, what is it called? The wagon. Uh, they have new wagons there that you can, uh, you can sleep in and we stayed in one that has two beds and it was it was really cool actually i've i can now say i've i've spent the night in a wagon <laughs> it's really neat all right last thing um got the hand guards and deflectors there also very inexpensive pick them up on amazon just the throttle assist so i could like you know keep going let my hand up let it you know when it gets tired 
It's wonderful, simple little lifesaver. No, I do not have an Atlas lock. I'm debating on whether or not I should ever get one. Um, the concept seems cool, but I'm not 100% sure if I want it. And then I just have a regular phone mount, nothing too fancy. It's claw car, uh, does a great job and pretty satisfied with it. So I don't know, maybe if you're like me, you have some balance issues, uh, or you're just looking for a different kind of ride, uh, maybe the Riker would be right for you. I gotta be honest with you, it is an extremely different ride than a two wheel motorcycle. Uh, one of the things I do miss about riding the Riker versus a two wheel motorcycle is leaning into curves. You still lean a little bit in this, but it doesn't have the same kind of, same kind of impact. There's a lot more push pull with the Riker. You have to maneuver the handlebars more to turn and there's less of that with motorcycles. Um, when I've talked to people, when they've asked me questions about the bike, because trust me, this thing gets a lot of attention out there uh, with people. A lot of looks, a lot of questions. But one of the major questions I get is, do I miss using a clutch? You know, I really thought I would. I really, really thought I would miss using a clutch. I don't miss it at all. If you don't know, the Riker is fully automatic. You know, it just, you know, you twist it and go. It's beautiful. There's only one brake. The ABS works on all three wheels at the same time, which is awesome. Um, I, I don't miss using your clutch. I, I, I just, I just don't. <laughs> I don't know what else to say to that, but I love my bike. It's wonderful. I'm very lucky to have it. Um, I've worked hard for, I've worked hard for it. And I'm, I'm very, very excited to continue riding. I'm excited to keep making videos. Um, I would love to ride with some of you other YouTube motorcyclists out there. Um, hit me up. We'll see what we can do. Of course, uh, my students out there who watch my videos, thank you so much. Y'all are amazing. And uh, they ask a ton of questions about the bike and I love answering their questions. They are so curious about it and uh, they just think it's neat. And yeah, yeah, it's about really about it. Well, the sun's coming out more. Maybe the rain is going to go away now. Who knows? Maybe I could get a little ride in later today. We'll see. Until next time, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me on my moto adventures. Whoop, almost covered the camera there. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. This is Coach Stroud. I hope you guys have yourself a great day. Deuces. We are out. Bye.